Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I've been wanting to play with my leaf blower again, but I'm a little worried because last time I did, everybody in the neighborhood complained because it was too loud. So I'm worried if I do it again, they'll make me move away this time. Squidville is the episode where Spongebob and Patrick accidentally destroy Squidward's house with reef blowers and Squidward moves away to live in Tentacle Acres where everybody who lives there has the same interests as him. Like Grandma's Kisses, this episode aired on April 28, 2001 and is the first time a character is shown moving away from where they live. In this case, it's Squidward. Squidward did try to move away before in episode 19, Opposite Day from season 1, but that plan didn't work out. And we do see characters move away in other episodes as the series goes on. This episode also has a ton of new characters introduced here, or just appear for a couple seconds and don't speak, that are octopuses just like Squidward. The only other times I can think of off the top of my head where there are a ton of other characters like this are episodes 225, Cephalopod Lodge from season 6, and 316, Smooth A Jazz at Bikini Bottom from season 8. Compared to its sister episode, this one is much more universally loved by fans. And after we just talked about one of, if not the weakest episode of season 2, I definitely need something better now. So let's watch this episode and revisit Tentacle Acres, where happiness is just a suction cup away. So the episode starts up and Spongebob gets a package and races to show it to Patrick, who also got a package. They both got new reef blowers and they run around playing with them. They decide to clean up Squidward's house, so they start to take the various stones and windows off the house. Squidward got angry with them and thinks that they're being childish playing with the reef blowers, but they basically trap Squidward in his house. Squidward tunnels out of his house and says, Put my windows back! They also took your door, Squidward, and all the other slabs of stone on your house. SpongeBob and Patrick blow the objects out of the reef blowers, but the pieces end up destroying Squidward's house. Squidward says that this was the final straw and decided to move as far away as he could. Then his TV falls down and a commercial comes on repeating everything that Squidward just said, telling him to move to Tentacle Acres, right after Patrick changes the channel. Later on, Squidward heads down to Tentacle Acres and tells the guard over the intercom that he's moving in. When they let him in, there are Easter Island heads as far as the eye can see, as well as people who look and act just like him, much to his delight. Squidward moves into his new house on 304 New Life Street. Is that street seriously called New Life Street? Right as Squidward was about to go to bed that night, Spongebob and Patrick call him and babble incoherently as their way of asking him to come home, but Squidward didn't oblige. The next day, Squidward rode his bike and saw everybody else in town were on their bikes too. He stopped at the Full of Health Market and found canned bread. Then he saw an interpretive dance academy and joined in on the dance. There was also a clarinet trio, and he joined in, making it a clarinet quartet. The next day, he did the same stuff again. Biking, canned bread, dancing, clarinet, biking, canned bread, dancing, clarinet, biking, canned bread, dancing, canned bread, dancing, clarinet, biking, canned bread, dancing, clarinet. But he soon started to become more and more bored as the days went on, and left while he was playing his clarinet. He could have done something else other than the same four things over and over again. The next day at the park, Squidward thought the town was too much paradise for him. Then he saw a park worker using a reef blower. When he set it down, Squidward walked over and started playing with it, much like how Spongebob and Patrick did. He took it over to the bench and played with it there, and started laughing so loud that a couple other octopuses asked him to be quiet. But Squidward retaliated by sucking up their croquet balls and mallet. Then another octopus came over and thought Squidward was childish playing with the reef blower. But Squidward just sucked up the other guy's clarinet and then blew it back. Then Squidward starts running around causing chaos with the reef blower. At that next moment, Spongebob and Patrick arrive at Tentacle Acres with a cake to convince Squidward to come home. Patrick breathes into the mic with his fried oyster skin's breath and the guards sniff it and pass out, letting them in. <laughs> I love season 2. An angry mob chased Squidward, and he got cornered. The angry mob presented Squidward a well-thought-out and organized list of complaints. That paper is blank. Squidward thought that everybody in town was so stuck up, but the officer reminds Squidward that he doesn't have to live there, and Squidward realized he was right. Spongebob and Patrick tried looking for Squidward, and Squidward rocketed away with the reef blower. Spongebob thought the flying guy wasn't Squidward, and the episode ends. Uh, he moved away because his old house was destroyed. Is his house fixed now? So that was Squidville, 
and I think this is a great episode. First up, I like the continuity at the beginning. SpongeBob's package was a new reef blower, which he clearly bought because in episode 2, Reef Blower from season 1, SpongeBob's old reef blower sucked up all the water in the ocean and it exploded. So it makes sense that he said this was his new reef blower. I also like how funny the backs of the reef blowers look after they suck up the windows and other stone from Squidward's house. I also have a theory as to why the guard asked Squidward if he has ever been a sponge or a starfish. In Opposite Day, Spongebob and Patrick, a sponge and starfish respectively, both pretended to be Squidward and the real estate agent was fucking pissed. She probably shared her horror story with somebody around here and that's why the guard asked Squidward that question. Something else this episode is known for is when Patrick changes the channel and says, I hate this channel. This line became so popular online and so many fans have posted videos where something else would be in play of the commercial which would end with Patrick saying his iconic line. I mentioned before how the scene from episode 48, Dying for Pie from season 2, where Spongebob screaming about Gary eating his dessert was the first Spongebob meme I saw after I discovered YouTube existed, but this scene was the next one I discovered. It was also cool seeing all the different videos fans put together with other clips playing in place of the commercials before Patrick cuts it off. Speaking of Patrick, I also love the scene with his fried oyster skin breath, but something I don't see people talking about too much with Patrick in this episode is this line. Ying. I find it so funny how his YING sounds so unenthusiastic, and his face after he says it is hilarious. I love the detail where these two octopuses' heads inflate and deflate when they laugh. It's also great how Squidward and the angry mob run past Spongebob and Patrick and they're like, hey, they all look like Squidward. It's also hilarious when Squidward comments on how childish it is to play with those oversized hair dryers and the other octopus guy repeats it later in the episode. Both scenes followed up by something getting sucked up by the reef blowers. And of course, I like how the reef blowers are called oversized hair dryers at times. It's nice how Spongebob and Patrick did feel remorse when they destroyed Squidward's house and caused him to move away. They were sad when he moved away and they were planning on apologizing to Squidward and giving them a cake. And of course, now it's time to talk about Squidward himself. Not surprising, Squidward is absolutely amazing in this episode. I love how he's steaming when he tunnels out of his house at the beginning. Even though he's pissed off when Spongebob and Patrick are ruining his house, it's entertaining this time in my opinion because I love the banter about playing with the oversized hair dryers. I love how he reacts to the commercial and how the commercial corrects itself when it said three-way instead of four-way. It's also f***ing hysterical seeing him go absolutely ballistic with the reef blower, disturbing everybody else in town, sucking these three noses off the houses, and when he rockets away at the end. I was laughing the entire time Squidward was sucking and blowing things with the reef blower. I also love the character arc Squidward has in this episode. He always gets easily irritated by Spongebob and Patrick, and when they go too far and accidentally destroys his house, he decides to move away. When he discovers Tentacle Acres, he moves there, and since everybody and everything around him are just like him, he believes he's in heaven. He enjoys his new life because the new town has everything he loves to do the most, and he can finally do it without being interrupted by Spongebob and Patrick. But as time goes on, and he does the same thing over and over again, he starts to become bored because nothing interesting was happening. When he hears a reef blower and thinks it's Spongebob for a split second, that shows he was starting to miss all the chaoticness that Spongebob and Patrick did all the time because it was more interesting than just the bicycle, can bread, interpretive dance, and playing the clarinet over and over and over again. He was bored and wanted something more fun to do, and when he started playing with the reef blower, he was enjoying himself, and he started going too far and was disturbing everybody else in town. They all got mad at him the same way he was mad at Spongebob and Patrick at the beginning of the episode. This of course happens since everybody in town is as stuck up as Squidward usually is, but they just never experienced the antics of Spongebob and Patrick the way Squidward has, and Squidward did them because he wanted some excitement. He didn't know he actually liked that until he was away from his old neighborhood for roughly two weeks. It goes to show that if you don't have any kind of struggle to deal with, then everything is just boring and repetitive, like living! Everybody wishes they don't have any struggles, but that's because they all work jobs, and that's where a lot of struggles come from anyway. If life was perfect, we wouldn't have anything left to look forward to, or any spice in our lives, and that's what Squidward learns in this episode. It's subtle, but it's a great lesson for a cartoon to teach. It also just goes to show how Squidward is the best and most relatable character in the show. Of course, I do have a couple nitpicks. First, I never understood why Spongebob and Patrick were just babbling in that one scene on the phone. 
And second, Square moved away because his house was destroyed. Since nobody states that his house was rebuilt or something, it's a little odd he left when he did without knowing if his old house was restored. But as usual, those are nitpicks that can easily be brushed off. I really love this episode for all the reef lore scenes and Squidward's character arc. I could go on and on about this episode, but I think I've said just about everything I can, so I'll end it off with this line from Squidward. Looks like when it comes to having fun, you don't have a leg to stand on. Squidville is a great episode. It's very funny and Squidward has a great character arc in this story. And the moral of this episode is also pretty cool for an underwater cartoon to teach. And I love it for that. And you know what? I will play with my leaf blower outside again. So what if I disturb everybody in the neighborhood? They got pissed again. They said I either had to move away or just give up the leaf blower. So I had to give up the leaf blower because I have absolutely no money left after buying that leaf blower.